once again, serving the valley. That's why I'm here. Let's see how it goes, because I've got a topic I want you to know a little bit about. Know a lot about, as a matter of fact. This, by the way, is a Cedar Falls TV production, and the purpose of that is to get you up close and personal about some of what it is that makes this part of Iowa kind of a nice place to call home, as I have experienced. My name's Roy Justice, and I'll be the host for the next few minutes. Today, we're going to take a look at love. I beg your pardon. Wait a minute. It's Love, Inc. Hmm. So it's not a dating service after all, but it is a very important service, a service of uh, a very important segment of the Cedar Valley area. So I'm going to call two people in a hurry, and they happen to be right here beside me. You need to meet Aaron Tink and Paige Price, and thanks for joining me. Thank you for having us. Uh, this is not a dating service. There's no phone calls, please. But Aaron and Paige were both at a recent meeting that I attended, and I picked up one of their pamphlets, and I was attracted to, first of all, it's called Love, Inc. That needs to be explained. Aaron, would you please explain what Love, Inc. is? I would love to. So Love, Inc. stands for Love in the Name of Christ. So it's an acronym. Okay. Yes. I was going to say, where do we find love? But <laughs> you, you do have a physical location. We do. We're right off of University Avenue next to Community Motors. Okay. And right. we have a small office there. And the reason it's small is because most of our work is done through our partner churches. Partner churches. Mm -hmm. I, I, looking through this list of your partner churches, you mean all of And how many are there there? We have 33. 33. Mm -hmm. You found 30 three churches <laughs> who could all agree on working <laughs> on something. Isn't that amazing? It is it amazing. It is amazing. Having been on it church is. boards in the past, it's <laughs> really amazing. It? It I'm is. not sure we have that long to explain all of that. Right. But let's try. Yes. What do you do? So Love, Inc. is designed to network churches together in order to meet the tangible needs of the community as one organization instead of as 33 or in our case, there's 120 churches here in the Cedar Valley, um, instead of as individual organizations. So we try to partner them together so that we can be more effective and more efficient as we serve the community. So as I opened the folder and read this, it says the clearinghouse. Yes. How does that work? So <laughs> we have our clearinghouses open Monday through Friday from nine to noon. And essentially it's a call center. It's a place where folks can call in to Love Inc. and make any requests for assistance that they might have so that then our volunteers and intake folks can call them back to discuss those needs and then schedule the appointments necessary in order to meet those needs in our community. How did this get started? When did it get started? Yeah, Let's go it's, that a, way first. it's a national organization that was started 40 years ago. And here in the Cedar Valley, uh, it was developed in 2010. So we're almost 10 years old here. Okay, so yeah. Paige, how did you happen to turn into this activity? <laughs> yeah, I was actually on staff with one of our partner churches and was working with Love Inc. on the partner church side okay. and just loved what was what we were what Love Inc. was doing and what was going on in the community. And so I was really attracted to how um, holistic and relational the focus was and so knew I wanted to be part of it too. It sounds like how Aaron got involved. It's the same story, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very similar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have this clearinghouse and we have 33 churches. I know from having relationship with churches that usually the door will open during the day and somebody's coming in looking for some help. Is that where the clearinghouse comes in? It wouldn't necessarily be the same kind of help from all of the churches involved? Correct. So what's happening is if, if somebody would to go into or call one of our partner churches for help, they would then direct them to Love Inc. and say, hey, we partner with Love Inc. so that we can help you more holistically or with a greater number of items uh, through the Love Inc. process. And so somebody may get referred to Love Inc. through a partner church mm -hmm. or a lot of times word of mouth. So now we are known in the community as a place that meets needs and oftentimes folks will call us directly. Okay, mm -hmm. so... Uh, in the day of social media, which we're very much involved in, you must have a website. <laughs> we do. I mean, you must have a website. <laughs> <laughs> we do. 
we do, and our folks can also apply for assistance online. So we're at loveincv.org and folks can find on the home page where to apply for assistance as well. And those requests go into the same chronological order as any others that would come in. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. As we're talking, people are looking at some of uh, the activity, if you will. Volunteerism is big, partnerships is good. Mm -hmm. um, as you see something flash up there on the screen of activity that is Love Inc. has been involved in, how, does pe how do people get started, either as a volunteer We've talked a little bit about the contact needed for some assistance, mm -hmm. but how about those who want to assist? Yes. Would you like to chat about volunteers Paige, and how would you I like get to started? Chat about volunteers? Absolutely. <laughs> so um, volunteers can reach out to us through our website or through Facebook or any social media. Give us a call anyway, and I'll set up a meeting with them so that we can get together face to face and go a little bit more in depth on who Love Inc. is, what we're doing, and how they can be involved. And then it's kind of through that meeting that we will figure out what feels like the best fit for that person. We have lots of different roles, and so we know each person has their own gifting and their own strengths, and um, they'll pretty naturally fit into one um, role that we have. And so we'll get them all signed up through our paperwork and get, get a start date on the calendar so they can get going with us. Okay, I like stories, so <laughs> tell me a story, Erin, about how this organization has played a part in someone's life. Absolutely, and we have so many wonderful stories. We try to share them on Facebook, so if you follow us on Facebook, that's a wonderful place to find them. One that we were sharing recently is a gal named Emma who came to us a couple of years ago because she had stable employment, although she was living in Waterloo fairly isolated, far from family and friends, and hadn't made very many connections yet. And she slipped and fell on the ice and crushed her ankle. Mm. And it re ended up requiring several surgeries, and in the meantime, lost her employment, um, which meant her stable source of income went away and she started to reach out to Love Inc. to figure out what types of tangible ways could we come alongside of her. What was especially neat is that we had volunteers that were available to deliver food to her, lo to her home and, and come alongside of her. We prayed with her at the time and the service on that level was, was really um, helpful for her as she was feeling very lonely and isolated and depressed at the time. We have a second step to our ministry that we call Begin Now, and it's a place where we invite folks into a classroom type of, type of an experience so that we can be in longer term relationship and potentially grow toward a greater level of stability. And Emma started to attend classes with us in our Begin Now program, and since has graduated, which means she, she attended and completed three different classes with us. And what was exciting to watch is as she got involved in the community there, she realized she wasn't alone in her struggle and began to find a safe place uh, to relate to other people and then also grow towards stability in her life. She's looking to come back and volunteer with us as well. Hmm. Okay, Paige, you missed our rehearsal, so uh, <laughs> you don't know exactly where I'm going to go like Erin did. Um, give me a story of your relationship with something that's happened to somebody that got help from Love, Inc. Yeah, so I mostly work with our Begin Now ministry, and so um, the cool part about my job is I get to see the same clients every week, sometimes for up to a year as they're working through their classes. And so um, it's really fun to see over the course of that time how much people grow and change. And so um, one gal in particular, she um, was really impacted by our budgeting class and um, just to see how much more confidence that gave her as she figured out she's on a fixed income so it's not that she's necessarily making more money or anything like that but she's learning how to um, manage what she does have and so um, even just talking about I don't buy pop from the pop machine anymore and now mm -hmm. I have money at the end of the month I'm not asking for help and I'm able to sometimes lend something to someone else and so just to watch how something so small like that has increased her confidence um, has been really impactful to me because it just goes to show that it doesn't always have to be a huge life transformation that can really um, better and change somebody's life and just um, improve improve the way that they're living. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, these two ladies have been kind enough to spend some time with us, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that there are people in the background that help give you direction and policies to keep this rolling on on a very positive note. Uh, maybe it's time to give some credit to some of those folks. They call them the board of directors, I yes. think. Yes, yes. They're a very influential group with us. Uh, we meet once a month and, um, and they help us guide and direct and find the strategy for Love, Inc. Another thing I want to be sure we, we uh, post is contact information. It may have already flashed on there and I wasn't watching, but if someone is listening, watching, and hearing something they might be interested in but they're not sure, inquiries can, a phone number, uh, something on the website that will refer them? Absolutely, so they can call us anytime at 319-266-1264 or email us at info at loveincv.org. Okay, Yeah. and someone will be back in touch. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, we've covered some of the material. I was jokingly, and I know I was joking, because I was, as we began the program, I want you to explain love. Where is love? <laughs> How, how did love get started? But I'm not going to ask that, so let's just cross that completely out of the program. But there's something that's been put together production-wise that may give you a little assistance in understanding what Roy has not been able to get uh, answered in my question so far. But there's more to come right after this. We are Love, Inc. That's not Inc. Corporated, but in the name of Christ. Here's what we do. We mobilize churches to transform lives and communities in the name of Christ. They are churches of all sizes and styles. Lutherans and Methodists, Presbyterians and Baptists, Wesleyans and Vineyard, and several others across denominational lines. So we mobilize churches. You could even say we mobilize the church in the Cedar Valley. But mobilize them for what? Well, here's how it all works. Let's say someone with some type of need walks into one of our partner churches. Could be diapers for their child, could be groceries for the fridge, could be a bed for their daughter or a stove or a refrigerator for the kitchen. And they say, can you help me? Here's what our partner churches do. They say, yeah, we can. Call Love Inc. So they do and we pick up. Or their friends do and we pick up. And we talk to them and we get to know them. We get to know their story, and we even pray for them. We build a file on them. We, we build a relationship with them. We get to know them beyond just their need because we don't want them to stay in need. And then we work to meet their need. If they need diapers, we connect them with this church that meets that gap. If they need groceries, we connect them with this church that meets that gap. If they need a bed or a stove or a refrigerator, we work with people from our partner churches to secure that donation and even make that delivery. And then we keep on building a relationship. We work to connect these folks to our churches near where they live. We work to connect these folks to transformational classes to help them build community and break the cycle of need. We treat them not simply as people who are in need, but simply as people created by God and loved by Jesus. Every week we take calls from our community and assess a variety of needs. We meet thousands of needs each year. But even more than those numbers, what we're really proud of is this. We put people into transformative relationships with each other. People in need, people meeting the need, people together in the name of Jesus. We mobilize churches to be the church. We transform recipients into givers. We transform lives and communities. We mobilize churches to transform lives and communities in the name of Christ. We are Love, Inc. Well, there you are, just a little bit of that. And if you missed it, you can rewind and watch it again. Meanwhile, we have more topics to discover. Um, volunteers. I can't think of an organization that always, when we have them on the program, says, oh no, we've got enough. Please don't call. <laughs> every position is filled and everybody stays forever. So we will never have to replace our volunteers. On the other hand, there are organizations like Love, Inc. who might be able to use some volunteer help. 
Absolutely. So just even in the last year, we've used 175 volunteers in our organization to serve the community. And there are so many different ways that, that folks can come alongside Love, Inc. and join us. So in our clearing house, we have some wonderful um, receptionist roles or intake volunteer roles. That means being on the phone with folks to walk with them through um, their life circumstances and scheduling appointments and things like that. So there's wonderful opportunities inside of our office during the day. We also have opportunities for folks to go out into the community to deliver goods to folks. Um, if somebody can't attend an appointment at one of our partner churches, a delivery volunteer may pick up food and take it to somebody. So we've got a regular rotation of folks that do that type of ministry. Uh, we have groups that can provide yard work or furniture moving, uh, home repair. There's a, there's a variety of different things that we can schedule groups to go out and do together as well. And then also in our classroom environment, there are volunteers that come alongside of our participants to learn alongside of them and help guide them through those classrooms as well. Let's do a little more explanation, if you will, uh, about this classroom situation. It's mm -hmm. called... Begin Now. Begin Now. Mm -hmm. Paige, begin now to explain <laughs> how that works. Yeah, so what we're doing is creating this environment where our clients can come in. We meet every Tuesday evening doing uh, different sessions throughout the year. Each session is 10 weeks long. And what we're just trying to do is create a place where they can f come to find community, to find some people that are maybe facing some similar challenges to them, and then also meeting some other people that um, are very different from them. And then we also offer these classroom environments where we're offering different courses on things like budgeting and money management or um, goal setting, or we've done, we do different elective classes that are always changing as well. So we've done parenting, we've done stress relief and healthy living, household management, healthy cooking, all kinds of different things that can just help people build on the skills that they already have and start to take some more steps towards stability. It's also a place where we invite in our volunteers to, um, like Erin was saying, be part of um, encouraging and taking just these classes alongside our clients, building relationships with them. It's such a fun place to bring together just people from all kinds of different backgrounds and beliefs and races and socioeconomic statuses and getting us all around the same table um, just to learn more about each other and learn more from each other and um, just build these beautiful relationships. There is a, when organizations like Love Inc. get started, there's this, um, goal, this, this, um, why don't I just pick up the paper and look, there's this vision. Explain the vision to me. Yes. What's neat about Love, Inc. is that we are holistic in the way that we serve our community. So we have different ways that we go along um, with that. We want to unite churches together. We want to make sure that our churches are working together and united with one another. We're relational, so each person that gets in touch with us, we make sure that they're, um, they, we see them as a person before we see their need and make sure that we are developing a relationship with them so that they feel seen and heard in their circumstances. And then lastly, we are holistic in the way that we approach our ministry. Uh, and as a result, we offer these classroom environments so that folks can grow toward greater stability in their lives. We want to be people who don't just give tangible goods away, but people who want to watch somebody grow toward the greater level of stability and be able to provide on their own. So that's an awful big challenge for an organization <laughs> yes, of, uh, and your staff is not overwhelming and spilling out into the hallways all the time. <laughs> um, there's a budget. How is the budget money raised? Yes, so a variety of different ways. We have, we our partner churches do offer financial help. There is not a, there's not a um, specific amount in which they contribute but they decide in and of themselves what they feel like is doable and give toward our organization. We also have funding from individuals who believe in our mission and come alongside of us whether that's a monthly donation or an annual donation to our um, ministry. We also um, have, a, have a little bit of um, grant support so we're, we're able to utilize some of the, the grant money in the community and push forward some of our programs. 
if there's an organization out there that's um, looking for a program, um, you probably have some kind of like a speaker's bureau or, or people who would go out and make a presentation for 15 or 20 minutes or whatever. Uh, who would that be? That would be me. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking to the right folks Yes, there. you are. How do you bring yes. something like that about? Yes, you can contact Love Inc. directly and we would be more than happy to come and talk about it and make any presentation to, to share our mission and to share our goals with the community. Okay, I want to go back to the classroom learning situation because that's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. uh, how many different times during the year do you start something like that up? We start three different times throughout the year. So usually um, late January and then we kind of go through the spring. Then we do a summer session that's early June through mid-August and then we'll start again with the fall in September after school has started. Okay. Uh, uh, back to the needs again, is there a certain category of needs that is just other than occasional help with some cash, but items that are, are in short supply that need to be replenished more often than others? Absolutely. There's, there's a variety of different ministries that we have that just they're, the requests for those are more than others. So the one that comes to mind, honestly, is some kitchen essentials. Mm -hmm. So pots and pans, plates, um, glasses, silverware, the basic essentials that can be put into quantities of four or a household amount is, is a wonderful donation to our ministry and helps our kitchen essentials ministry move forward. Other donations we would absolutely receive would be um, medical supplies. There's, we have an interesting ministry where folks can borrow medical supplies from one of our closets. And so if that's something that, um, that somebody is no longer using and could be lent out to another individual in our community, we would absolutely receive that donation. We also receive furniture and, and it's basic uh, <laughs> furniture. So we end up doing couches, love seats, dining sets, uh, refrigerators, stoves, washers, dryers, bed sets, and dressers. We're very specific in the types of items that we receive because we have volunteer teams that pick those up and also deliver them to our clients. So we, we want to reduce the amount that we receive just to make sure that it is the, the absolute necessities that somebody may need because we're, we're making that delivery. But it's a wonderful place to, um, to find a new home for any used furniture that's still in great condition. So if I were to try to sum up the program and people are just turning in and saying, oh, I missed the program. Well, it'll be on again probably sometime in the next couple of months or whatever. Um, Love Inc. is trying to meet real needs, mm -hmm. uh, helping to inspire lasting changes in individuals. You think I'm writing? No, I'm getting it right out of this. <laughs> and Aaron Tink and Paige Price have been kind enough to join us and help educate Roy in this particular case. <laughs> I want to thank you for allowing us to uh, spread a little love. Thank you for having us. And thank you for joining us today. Until the next time we meet, Roy Justice, serving the Valley.